Hello and welcome to my channel on the hoop crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and today let's find out what's been on the hook. Today I want to talk about my works in progress and which whips I'm going to continue working on and which whips I'm going to put in time out. So those are for the next season. I have a lot of whips that I started and I've worked on a little at a time and I haven't been able to finish because there are so many and I have so many ideas floating around in my head that I have to concentrate on two or three or I will never finish any of them. So I think it's better to put some in time out for next season, um, maybe even uh, rip them out. And one I do plan to frog and put away the yarn for next season. Uh, or maybe this season, I don't know, but it's, it's going to be frog. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. Um, first of all, I want to tell you what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a beautiful um, top that I crocheted. It's really the America Tank pattern that I used to make this. It's just about the same neckline and the sleeves are just capped. And then I've added a band here. The band also matches the bottom, which is very beautiful. I like the way this looks. Um, but I just, I think it's a half double crochet lace band. I can't swear to that. I'm not really sure if that's correct, but um, the band also matches the sleeve band and then the neck band as well. And you'll find that when you add those uh, design elements to your sweater, that everything kind of pulls together. It looks beautiful. You don't have to use two different colors. You can use two different stitches. You can match your bands together. I think that is a very nice look, especially if the sweater itself is plain and it may just be a solid color done in a beautiful stitch. It doesn't have to be a fancy stitch um, as long as your yarn is pretty. Now this yarn is from Knit Crate. It's a very beautiful yarn and I've talked about it many times, but it's very comfortable and it crocheted very beautifully. So I really enjoyed making this, but I did make it by the America Tank pattern. Now, Crystal is wearing a really pretty sweater that I made from Beautiful You yarn, which is by Lion Brand. And I, I like this, I like this yarn. And honestly, I would buy it again. I, it's not, it's a little late in the season to buy this, I probably won't buy it again um, until next year, but this is made on the sleeve built into the front and back fabric pattern, and I have four of those patterns that you can look at. This is a very low neck. It's not really low as much as it is wide, and it's a very cool top to wear. I've worn this many, many times. I like the, the yarn, the beautiful U yarn, and it's an acrylic, um, and I uh, have enjoyed the color. I really tend to like this Cayenne color, C-A-Y-E-N-N-E, -N -N -E, Cayenne or whatever, have you pronounce it. Uh, I like this color better than I do the, um, the more cool color, but I adjust my makeup when I'm wearing this and I adjust my makeup when I'm wearing that. So they do look a little better if I change my lip color and maybe my blush color. So, um, I wanted to show you this because I've been wearing this a lot this season and I'd like to make another one of these, maybe in a little bit longer sleeve, but this goes almost to my elbow because it is a little tiny bit of a boxy sweater. It probably has hmm, four inches of ease in it. It's not terribly boxy, but it is a very comfortable sweater and I've worn it quite a bit. So I made this by one of the four patterns that I named in one of the videos, uh, the Woodland Tweed, the Stone Wash, the Foxy Boxy, and the Fall into Autumn. All four of those patterns are made with the sleeve built right in. And this is a very fast make. And I'll show you another um, sweater that I'm making uh, like that here in just a couple of minutes. So that is what Crystal's wearing. This is what I'm wearing. And so now let's move on to our works in progress. My first work in progress is a top-down sweater. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I've posted a few pictures of this. I've had to rip out quite a bit of it. I started one and I wanted to be sure that the, um, 
that the raglans matched up and they were not. I was doing it wrong. I was distracted somehow and so I uh, wasn't crocheting correctly and you have to count sometimes when you're wet, when you're making a top down sweater. I don't like to count stitches. That's not my favorite thing to do. But uh, I will if I need to. And I'm trying to come up with a, um, a sweater pattern that's very simple that can be adjusted for your size. And so we can use measurements instead of numbers of stitches. And that's what I'm after. I'm going to try it again. I tried this, oh, several months ago. And I, of course, was distracted at that point. But I'm making this from the Line Brand Jeans yarn in the colorway jumpsuit. And this is, uh, I've made another uh, little cardigan out of this in one of my earlier videos and uh, really enjoyed the color. I, it's so beautiful and so different. Um, Lion Brand is a great company. I like their yarns and I use them quite often. So I'm using, uh, I had three or four balls of this left from a project and I thought I'm just going to try that. And it's very comfortable, it's very soft. And it'll be warm. It's, it's really going to be a warm sweater. I'm not going to make it sleeveless or anything. But I do want to uh, finish this and get the pattern out for y'all to use. And it's just going to be a basic pattern that you can change up so many different ways. And that's my goal, to get a pattern out there that's more of a recipe to make a top-down sweater so that you can make one and your initial measurement around the neck Will be important and I'll figure out if uh, that needs to be a certain number of stitches like a multiple of. So those of you who knit and crochet know what I'm talking about. Um, every now and then you'll need to um, chain up depending on the pattern of the stitch. That was a new project, my uh, top-down sweater. But this is a work in progress. and I'm just going to skip around here today and not uh, have everything just in a row. I'm, I have my projects here. I'm just going to talk about each one and tell you what I'm going to do with those. This is my camouflage <laughs> sweater, which I didn't mean for it to be camouflage, but the yarn um, really insisted on that. It's a Vita Lana by Knit Crate, and the colorway is tapenade, and here it is not balled up. It's beautiful. I love the greens. I'm really a green fanatic. I'm, I think that's my favorite color. And I've used all but this much of one of the balls. And this is the other ball that I have. So I have three balls of this. And that should be ample to make this sweater. Now I have put a lace design in this, which would probably be much more beautiful in a solid color. And as I was working through it, I realized that that was not going to show off that beautiful lace pattern that I've got in here. But something like the beautiful U... Uh, yarn would show up very beautifully in this particular pattern. So I'll be writing this pattern and it should be out, um, I don't know, in a couple, three weeks, maybe, uh, depending on how busy I get at home. But uh, this is what I have so far and this is the front. I'm just going with the front right now. The back may be solid. I might just make it solid or it would be an option to put the lace on the back. If you want to do that, you can certainly do that. I may make it solid just to make it different, but you are certainly welcome to make the lace at, on the back as the same as the front. I'm also crocheting out with sleeves that are going to be below the elbow. They're going to come to right about there, and that should be pretty comfortable, and then I'll probably put an edging on it to bring it in and make it look more finished. And that is what this is going to be. This is my work in progress that I'm actually working on and working diligently on that. This is living in a see-through bag, so I don't forget what I'm working on. <laughs> so that's, that's in a bag that sits on my desk so I can remember what I'm working on there. Uh, the second project that I'm actually working on is living in one of these um, custom bags that Joe made for me. I have a video of hers later in the program and I will show that to you. Uh, this is made with, this is a new pattern made with Patton's Silk Bamboo yarn. It's very beautiful yarn and these are the two colors. I don't know if you've been watching my show, you'll know that I'm working on these three, these two colors are moss and almond. Those are the two colors in the Silk Bamboo, so soft. 
and I have plenty of that left in here, so I'm not worried about running out of yarn. But this is going to be a vest, and it's going to be a pullover vest for fall. And I have crocheted the front all the way up to the shoulder on one side, and this is what it looks like. It's going to be striped, and this will be two rows here and two rows on the back that will meet, so it will be continuous in the same number of rows going back to the back. It's going to be a V-neck. So I've already crocheted all of my decreases here, and you'll see all of the um, stitch markers that I've used, and that will be on one side. The other side I haven't done yet, but this is what it's going to look like. It's going to have, obviously, have two sides to it. But it's a little bit of a boxy, and it's a little bit longer than what I usually make. But I plan to wear this with a, a blouse under it, maybe a collared blouse and in white, or a white turtleneck. And that will be for fall. This will not be worn without something under it. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to make it that way. Because the v-neck is going to come down kind of low to allow the, the blouse underneath to show. So that that's one of the projects that I'll be completing very soon. Sorry, my camera was going like this, so I thought I better straighten that up. <laughs> now, um, another project that I'm working on is I ordered the same yarn in the Patents Silk Bamboo. The top one is blush and the bottom is stone. They are the Patents Silk Bamboo size 3 weight yarn. I love this yarn. That is the same yarn that I'm using on my green and white vest. Now, I'm planning on a, um, a long sleeve sweater for this particular yarn and I'm going to combine the two in an odd way and I hope y'all will like it. When I start it, I will show you the progress that I'm making on this, but I have an idea of how I want to do it. I've already drawn it out and I think I'm uh, going to start that very, very soon. And that will give me the top down, the green and white, the cami, and this one that I'm going to work on. And hopefully I won't get too distracted having four whips. That's not too bad. Four whips is not bad. I'm just going to mix my haul, H-A-U-L, my hauls in here. Um, I ordered some Karen Simply Soft in Harvest Red. And this is a brownish red. It is not a bright orangey red. It is a beautiful uh, warm toned red. I really, really like it. And I've ordered enough of this to make a sweater for, I think, for Christmas. And I'm going to make it red and black. Uh, last year, as you know, if you um, have ever been on my Etsy shop, you'll see my Christmas sweater was red and green. And that was kind of loud. I realized that. I like to wear loud things. It doesn't bother me. But some people really had a problem with the colors that I chose. And I hope if that ever happens, you can choose your own colors because you are certainly welcome to choose your own colors. Just use the pattern. You can do that. But this is what I'm going to combine with some black Karen Simply Soft. And I'm going to make a sweater and it will probably be along the same lines as this as far as combining the two colors and that will be uh, my next project. I've got the yarn but I have not started this project. I probably won't do that for another month or two. Another project that I would like to continue working on is a shawl project and this is made from two knit crate yarns that have um, the bling in them and, and they're the same yarn as the top that I have on. That's one reason I wore this today. These two yarns are a sport weight yarn and I plan to put these two together in a coordinated way. I just thought those were beautiful together, the sand color and the purple. So that is a project that I would like to continue to work on and I'm making that project with an H hook which is a 5.0 millimeter I'm making that with an H hook. So um, the, the yarn is small and I think this, the shawl needs to be delicate just like the yarn. So I'm going to work on that and that is another work in progress. Now I'd like to talk about some whips that I have in progress that are going to be in timeout. And that means I'm just going to lay them aside, I'll pack them up and um, pick them up next season. 
so that uh, I can hit the ground running with those. Now this one I may continue on with because of the color. The color is very beautiful. It's called pigment and this is a cotton linen nylon combination. This is from Knit Crate and I showed this to you when I received it in the mail. It's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, it's very loud. I realize that. It's, it's extremely loud. This is what it looks like balled up. It's basically orange. I mean, <laughs> but that's a fall color. And so I can, had continued with it and I was using an eye hook with that and I continued with it for a while. And this is how far I crocheted with this particular yarn. And I really like it. I did like it when I started it. I still like it, but I'll tell you why I'm going to rip this out. When I started it, I was down here at the bottom. I did a row, looks like, of single crochet. And then I was doing half double crochets all the way up. And then all of a sudden, I got wild. And I, next and I, I have next I have a video from Joe who makes custom project bags. Hi, it's Joe with Joe for Totes. And I'm going to show you six bags that I've made over the past two weeks. The first one is a Tinkerbell bag. And this one goes to Danielle. And Danielle lives in Ellendorf, Texas. And um, she said, told me that um, she had a boss who used to call her Tinkerbell. And uh, she always really loved that. So the back has got all of the Tinkerbell fabric in it. She's got two sides on both um, ends of the bag. And then the, um, the fabric that I used for this top pouch for the side, I also used for the um, the handles and then I have this little kind of a um, purplish leaf decorative stitch for the handle. On the inside of the bag all she wanted was one zip pocket and um, on the inside of this pocket I put the same fabric as I used for the handles and also for the top of the side pouches. Now what I found when I was out shopping one day was a Tinkerbell charm and Danielle had already placed her order way before when I found this charm. And I'd forgotten that she didn't have a top zip. She just has a, a top snap closure for her bag. But I bought that charm anyway because I thought it would be perfect. So for the inside, I put this Tinkerbell charm on the end of her zipper tab. So I just thought that was so cute. It just matched so perfectly. And the uh, mandala... Um, I thought I would show you that too, the, her little snap cover. That turned out really cute. So that one goes to Danielle. <clears throat> the next one is a special bag because Terry, who lives in Lexington, South Carolina, sent me this fabric. She said she's had this fabric for a long time and just really loved it. And it is so cute. These fish have, I don't know if you can see, a little silver type of um, coloration to the to the gills in the fish, it's really pretty. So this is her pull on the outside pocket. I'll show you what the outside pocket looks like on the inside. It's got the same fabric as the top of the side pouches and she's got four of those. The front of the bag and the medallion that I made um, has little silver thread stitch around it to hold it. And then little bitty, um, we call those French knots and um, just all kinds of little stitches for that medallion. I just thought that turned out so cute. And uh, then for her top zipper pull, I had a little star fish that I put on it for her. And then the other uh, little beads. And on the inside, <clears throat> She wanted cloth pouches. So she has two cloth pouches and she wanted one of them divided. So you can see that this one is not divided and this one is. So she can put a couple of cell phones in there if she needs to. And um, so that's the inside of her bag. The binding, I use the same fabric as I used to line these pockets and the inside of the pouch. And then what she wanted, because she had plenty of fabric left over, was a little zip pouch um, out of the same fabric. So she has a zip pouch out of the same fabric and of course a little charm 
with a little shell on it for that. And then um, the next bag is a real special bag. Now, this is uh, a bag that Joe, who lives in Pearl River, Louisiana, asked me to make her. And when I first got the email from her asking me to make her a spider bag, I thought, oh dear, I don't think that would be good. But I found, and she said, no, I just want cute, colorful spiders. Well, I actually found some fabric that I thought was, these were kind of cute, colorful spiders. She likes geometric, not flowery fabric. So uh, she liked this stripe and she likes uh, polka dots. So I would line it with polka dot fabric. The front of the bag has this chevron print on the fabric. And uh, it just has all the colors that all these spiders had. It was just a perfect, perfect match. For her pull tabs for her zipper, I put little spiders, <laughs> as you can see. And then her uh, charm um, has, I didn't have a little spider charm, but I had a little lamb that I put on there and then all the colors that you can see. Her medallion turned out so cute. I used a black thread on it and I tried to make it look like a spider web. I don't know if it came across very well, but that's what it's supposed to look like. Then the inside of her pouch uh, is got the um, polka dot fabric. And then her handles have the same chevron um, fabric that the front of the bag has. And then on the inside, she wanted two clear pouches. So she has two clear pouches on the inside. And you can put all kinds of stuff in there. You can put telephones, you can put patterns, you can put your hooks. Um, and of course, these other bags I didn't show you too, but they all have the stitch markers that everyone gets. <laughs> this one's stuck. <laughs> always pulling it the wrong way. Uh, but anyway, and I try to always match up the same colors that coordinate with the bag. And I was able to do that very well with Joe's bag. So I just thought it turned out so cute. Now, what she also wanted was a matching zipper pouch just like uh, Terry wanted, but I did hers a little different. I put this coordinating fabric, but this polka dot fabric I put on the bottom. And then I don't know if you can see this, but these spiders right here have a little chartreuse heart and I had some chartreuse fabric. So the inside of this pouch is really <laughs> colorful. And then of course she has a little uh, charm for her zipper pull too that I thought was really cute. So that goes to Joe. Now the last bag is for Crystal. And uh, Crystal lives in Plainville, Connecticut. And this is, is either the, I know it's the second, it might be the third bag that I've made for Crystal. So I keep getting emails from her, make me another bag. <laughs> and she always likes to challenge me. So this one is another big bag. It's 16 by 16 by six. So 16 across, 16 high and six deep. Um, she So Crystal has a heritage of Indian, um, Celtic, and French. And she wanted this all incorporated into one piece of fabric and it just couldn't happen. I mean, you just can't find a piece of fabric with all those three things. So she found the fabric that she wanted me to use. It has the dream catchers and the feathers like for Indian. It has all this Celtic design, and then the design on the side pockets have little fleur-de-lis, and that's very French. So the, the main color that runs through all of these is purple. So when we were talking about the inside of the bag, uh, Crystal doesn't want anything just like everybody else wants it. She wants it a little different. So we put purple on the bottom. I found purple duck cloth on the bottom, and then you're really going to be surprised at this. She wanted that same duck cloth on the inside of her bag. And you may not be able to see that very well, but it's purple. It's the same color as the bottom of the bag. <laughs> and it turned out so cute. It did. And she also wanted, well, she wanted a, uh, a drawstring cake bag to match. And so it does. It has all the same colors. This purple fabric that is on the inside of the... Um, uh, the inside of the zipper, nope, that's not, oh, the other fabric she wanted was butterflies because she said her grandmother always told her she was her butterfly. So you have butterflies on the inside of the pocket and um, 
you have this purple fabric that's what i was looking for that you also see on this drawstring bag and then for the top of the drawstring bag i use the butterfly fabric as well and for the inside i use the purple fabric again so it's very colorful very very pretty i think she'll really like this for the inside crystal also wanted one um, clear vinyl pouch and then she wanted two little sleeves to put crochet hooks in so that's what you see here there's that vinyl pouch and then two crochet sleeves on either side of that kind of hard to see because it's so dark <laughs> in there but um, then on the inside po zip pocket she um, I was able to use the butterfly fabric that she likes so much and I use that along the binding too for the zipper and then for the zipper pull tabs I used the fabric that had the flare de lis on it and um, anyway this is just a really big bag and I think that she will really like it I used the, the French flare de lis as well on the handles and uh, I don't think I showed you her medallion but on this medallion I don't know if you can see it if it came across very well but I used a stitch, a couple of stitches to make like a flare de lis on, with a yellow uh, thread. And then these are supposed to be little butterflies. Some of them turned out to look like butterflies, others didn't. <laughs> but I just thought that that turned out really well for her. So I hope that she'll really enjoy this. It was a fun bag to make. It was a big bag to make. So the bigger they are, the more of the challenge they are for me. But I love a challenge. So until I see you next time, this is Joe with Joe for Totes and all my bags. Thank you, Joe. That was beautiful. I love your bags. I have them lined up here with my whips and hopefully they will hold all of my whips. I'm going to remove some of my uh, whips from the bags that I'm using and I see a bag over there with several things in it I, that I didn't even bring up today So I still have some work to do on the putting them in timeout and if I can get those organized I will show you those next week now for the giveaway portion of my program. I am giving away a crochet world magazine um, this week it's the October 2020 magazine. It's wonderful. I've I actually received my own copy this week. I'm, I'm getting two of these, uh, maybe three, but I'm getting at least two of these in the mail and I'm giving them away as they come in. Uh, I'd like to keep one for myself, but uh, I am giving away the others. So, as, so far I've gotten one extra and uh, along with that I'm going to give away a Finishing Touches 5 Crochet Accessory Pamphlet from Lion Brand. These are neat patterns. They are not difficult and there's some really cute things in here. So whoever wins the crochet magazine, I will send this really nice pamphlet from Lion Brand that came in an order of uh, yarn that I ordered last week and I'm going to send that along with the magazine to the winner of the giveaway today. The key word was harvest. So I am going to turn the camera to the computer and let's find out who wins the crochet magazine this week okay so here we are looking at the computer I have the URL from last Monday's video here I have the keyword here which was harvest and let's find out how many YouTube comments would actually uh, qualify to be in the giveaway all you had to do is put the word harvest in your comment so that is 296. Thank you for participating. So let's go over here and find out who wins the Crochet World magazine for this week. And that would be Sharon Deardoff. Sharon Deardoff. I have been wanting to make a blanket in harvest colors for fall. Your new scarf pattern looks great in all types and weights of yarn. Thank you for your comment, Sharon. Sharon, you're the winner of the Crochet World magazine this week. Thanks for participating everyone. I will disclose that I'm having a little trouble with my new camera. Actually my husband bought me a new phone to use as a camera which I really like. I like the iPhone to use as a camera. The camera is really super nice and it it focuses very quickly. When I put something up to the camera, for example um, a yarn label, something like this, it focuses so fast compared to some of the more expensive cameras and so if you think about an iPhone 
the camera is very, very well done because a lot of iPhone activity is done with the camera. So that's why they work so well. Um, every now and then I have trouble getting the voice and the video to sync up, and I know y'all have talked about that. I've noticed it when I go back and rewatch my videos. I notice that sometimes my uh, voice is not with the video, so I don't know how that happens. I'm not a huge editing fan. I don't know a whole lot about video editing, but I do some of my editing so that my videos aren't too terribly boring and I can move right along with my segments. So, um, Sharon, you are the winner of the Crochet World magazine for this week. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Now, for next week, I'm going to make another pouchy and give it away. I don't know what it's going to look like yet, so I won't know till next Monday, but I will make another pouchy. It will probably be on the lines of this, this one. This is the girly girl pouchy that I made, one of the very first ones that I made. I really like this uh, fabric, and it's very girly. So I thought I would make one of those for one of my viewers and subscribers for next Monday. So if you want to participate and be in the drawing for next Monday's pouchy by On The Hook Crochet, you can use the keyword Let's just make it pouchy, P-O-U-C-H-I-E, pouchy, P-O-U-C-H-I-E, and you will be in the running for a giveaway. So just put that in your comment below. You can ask me any questions you want. I like to do a question and answer segment every so often. So if you have a question about any of my patterns or about me, or you just want to uh, ask a question, a random question, you can do that and just put it in the comment section So if below. you enjoy this video, please hit the like button. That way YouTube will know that you like this video and they might send it out to some other people who would like it as well. I have a lot of subscribers that have joined in the last few weeks. I don't know why, but I really appreciate it. I'm almost at 8,000 subscribers. I never thought I would be there. And thanks to each and every one of you that participates with my videos. I so appreciate your comments. As I always say, I read them. I love them. I love to read from y'all uh, what you're thinking about my videos and how you think I uh, might improve them. If you think that there's something that you would like to see, let me know and I'll try to incorporate that into my videos as well. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week and next weekend as well. And I will join you again on Monday when we find out what's on the hook.